Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Cardboard Heralds Off the Table, your Monday morning tabletop gaming news, community, and questions in 10 minutes or less. As always, I'm your host, Jack, and we got a ton to cover today, so let's get to the show. Our first news item is that last week's totally bogus Game of Thrones card game Kickstarter creator has been arrested. The police investigated the reports of child endangerment that were coming out of that Kickstarter, and yeah, it got dark. And the local media got a hold of the video with the threats of the children, and you can find the links to all this in the description below. I'm just giving you a content warning that there's some pretty tough stuff to deal with, but it looks like that is the conclusion of this saga. Then the United States playing card company, makers of bicycle playing cards, are now getting into hobby games. Their imprint will be games by bicycle, and they already got a bunch of games lined up. That Frix Games is working on Terraforming Mars The Dice Game. This comes out of a convention report by Reddit user Tim Bonicus, who actually got a chance to play the game. And apparently it covers the same overall scope of Terraforming Mars, but you're managing dice and your production in a slightly different way. It takes only about an hour, and there are a ton of awesome details to read up on this. All I know is that I love dice, I love Terraforming Mars, and I love dice-centric Euro games, so I am super excited about this. And then Rule and Make, makers of Hand of Fate, is closing its doors. In an update, they said, I'm sad to announce that Rule and Make is no longer financially viable and will be shutting down. Changes to the market as well as several unsuccessful projects have left us in a position where we are unable to continue. So best of luck to them. I hope they land on their feet. And then this was probably one of the biggest and most ambiguous news stories of the week. Jeff Berggren, the CEO of the Gaming Goat chain of stores, accused Stonemeyer Games of anti-retail business practices. And this was a big post with all kinds of images and supposed evidence. And Jeff does make a pretty solid case from his perspective of why map policies and changes over the past year have been unreasonable and that retailers who aren't able to comply are getting blacklisted from distributors. But at the same time, it sounds like someone who got burnt by having way too much stock of My Little Scythe and not enough stock of Wingspan, and they're looking for a place to put their blame. While Jamie Stegmaier does have a history of sticking his foot in his mouth, he's a savvy businessman, and by a consumer perspective, he does have unparalleled customer service. So... What your takeaway from this should be is that the process of getting games to your door is a complex network of various businesses with various interests, and you as a customer can become educated and then support the practices that you want to see. And then our last news story is that Mike Hyman's design of 1572 Legacy just won first place at the International Game Crafter Legacy Design Contest. Mike is a good friend of mine, and this is my show, so I can give him a shout out if I want to. Congratulations, Mike. You are an awesome game designer and an even better friend. Alley Cat Games is going to be looking at this game for mass distribution. Congrats. And then over in announcements, Pandasaurus is releasing Dead Man's Cabal and Ariel at Origins. And then Bezier Games has announced Silver and Silver Bullet. These are traditional card games in the werewolf universe designed by Ted Allspock. Now, Ted and Bezier Games have been behind some of the coolest games of the last decade, including Suburbia, which is one of my absolute favorites. So, of course, I asked if Ted could come on the show and talk about some of the design goals in Silver and Silver Bullet. So here is Ted Allspock of Bezier Games. Hi, I'm Ted Allspock with Bezier Games. Some of the design goals that I had when working on Silver was how to take this, this really cool system of reducing your sums and reducing the number of cards that you have and making it so that every turn you have interesting decisions. Interesting decisions are really the core of, as far as I'm concerned, any fun game. You always want to have uh, something that you can do that you're making a choice. And sometimes you realize, like, you know, this is a better choice for right now, or it's a, a better choice for the future, but at least it's a choice. It's not an obvious move. 
Um, in, in some cases, in games, you know, there's things, well, you should do this. It's pretty obvious what to do here. Um, and that'll happen at some point. But for the most part, you usually have multiple different things that you can do inside Silver. And every card, because of the different abilities they have, uh, is going to give you a vast, vast breadth of options. And I think that's that's really compelling. And that was definitely the goal when we started developing Silver. And certainly as we're developing additional um, expansions and compatible standalone games for the system. Thank you so much, Ted, for coming on the show. And in fact, Ted was willing to answer a bunch of questions associated with Silver and Silver Bullet. So stay tuned to future episodes of Off the Table because I'll have a couple more segments to bring to you from him. So as always, we have our question segment, and today's question is, what are your questions? In fact, I got a couple questions recently where people were wondering, where can I send you my questions so you can answer them on the show? Because this originally started as a mailbag section, and I wanted to offer that as a service we can provide around here. So if you have questions that you'd like to see me answer on next show about anything in the world, then just put it in the comment section below, or you can send us an email at the contact link at the top of CardboardHerald.com. And that's going to do it for our show today. Thank you so much for watching another episode of the Cardboard Herald's Off the Table. All of your support, your sharing, your retweeting, that all means the world to us, so thank you. Once again, thanks for watching. I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald, and I'll talk to you next week. That's a lot of thank yous, but I'll deal with it. If you enjoyed this video, we have all kinds of other reviews, interviews, and recommendations via writing, podcast, and video here on our channel and website, CardboardHerald.com. Our content is audience-supported, so if you want to show your support, please visit our Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. This has been the Cardboard Herald.